Greetings, beloved. Thank you for tuning in today. It is the dream of many people to purchase homes. While many people choose to purchase a home that is already built, others may choose to build from the ground up. Either way, the builder is required to use a blueprint. A blueprint is defined as a design or a plan put on paper for the purpose of constructing a building successfully. The same way construction workers follow the blueprint in order to successfully build a house, likewise, Christians who want to build a solid family must be willing to follow God's blueprint to do so. Stay tuned as we discuss the design that God has given us to follow, God's blueprint for family. Amen. I want to say greetings to everyone and thank you all for joining us today for more of God's Blueprint for Family. My name is Brother Hawk Bolden and I have standing on side of me my lovely wife, Sister Antoinette Bolden. Amen. We always praise God for this opportunity to come before you and um, we're especially thankful for those of you who are not only tuning in but also just being blessed and um, just allowing the word to um, change your lives and um, prayerfully you're just growing closer to the Lord day by day and and also even in your family situations um, prayerfully this word is able to um, give light to different situations and to um, help you to make godly decisions and use godly wisdom um, as, you were, as you're faced with different things because I know certainly, um, as much as we stand up here, and I think I've said it from the very beginning, um, whatever it is the Lord give us to talk about, um, I always find that there's a place in our own lives to apply the Word. And, you know, that's what the Word is for, um, for us to not just hear it, but to live it out, um, to do it. And that's what the Word um, refers to, that we should not only be hearers of the Word, but doers of the Word also. And so um, we better believe that, as often as the Lord speaks to us, he's speaking about something, whether it's present or some things to come, um, we can look for an opportunity to um, put his word to work in our lives. Amen. 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 So uh, I guess today I kind of felt led for us to talk about order and uh, just about order in the home. And um, although we've addressed this before, uh, I imagine the Lord got some other things he wants to uh, share with us about order. Amen. And, and the importance of order. Of course, we've gone over and over in scripture concerning uh, the roles that different people play. You know, of course, for any team that you have, um, you're going to have people playing different positions on that team, on that team, whether it's basketball or football or whatever. And so that's it's important for for people who are on a particular team to know what role they're playing, number one, number two, to stay in that role. And I think, you know, of course, at the top of that list is understanding that, uh, first of all, they're on the same team, you see, because uh, oftentimes when um, things happen between husband and wife, especially, uh, it's easy to forget that you're on the same team. And so you're playing offense, they're playing defense and vice versa. And so before you know it, you're attacking one another. And any team, uh, especially with a team that has an opponent, any team that is more bent on playing against one another instead of teaming together and working in unison to go against their true enemy or opponent, uh, that team will lose by default. You see that the devil doesn't have to do much in, against a marriage when the people in that marriage are working against themselves. That's right. You see, right. Amen. and so uh, it, it is important that um, everyone realize uh, what part they're playing and uh, remain in that part and remember that they're on the same team as their as their spouse. Okay. So uh, let's go look at. Let's go to the 12th chapter of the book of First Corinthians. And uh, we're going to bring out a few scriptures just to help us to understand this concept a little bit better. Uh, 12th chapter 1st Corinthians and we're going to start reading at verse 12 for as the body is one and hath many members and all the members of that one body being many 
or one body, so also is Christ. Everybody see that? So one body, and that's the way you have to look at it when you're talking about husband and wife, that you're one. Okay, let's go ahead and keep reading. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So this is talking about the different people. Now, of course, this is talking about the body of Christ, but it can also be uh, talking about uh, husband and wife because they're one as well. And instead of being baptized into one body, you are brought into covenant through marriage to be one. You see that? And so here... Uh, the Lord is letting us know that regardless of if you're Jews or Gentiles, whether you're bond or free or whatever. In other words, you can have these different personalities in a marriage. But if you're married, you're still one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so oftentimes we take our different personalities as a negative. You see, if you don't agree with everything I agree with or if you're not just like me, then you know, th that's another strike against the marriage, so to, so to speak, you see. But that's not the way God um, intend for it to be. Regardless of how we are as a person, um, God is still calling us one. Amen. 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 All right, let's go ahead and keep reading. For by one spirit... Verse 14... For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? So when we get married, uh, of course, a lot of times you'll have two wills there. And um, because the husband is supposed to be the head now, uh, God made it that way, uh, if the wife is not careful, she, she, can, she may say, well, because I'm not getting my way, then I'm no longer part of this marriage. And then the husband may say, well, since you're out of it, I am too. And so you have two people playing married, just living two separate lives, still coming home at night, still sleeping in the bed together, things like that. But it's like roles have been taken out of it. There's no defining line. You belong here, I belong there. You know, uh, because people have crossed the line. You see that? And, and, and that's where a lot of uh, the danger comes in that. And so it's easy for people to say, well, if you don't allow me, a husband to say, well, if you don't allow me to be your husband, I'll just let you go, you know, whatever. And the wife may start that whole issue with, well, I'm not going to submit. Since I can't get my way, then, you know, forget about it, or whatever the case is. And so here we're taught how to deal with that. Are you not married now? Just, beca right. just because you're not <laughs> getting your way is what, is what this word is telling us. Or now you're out of the covenant of marriage now right. because somebody have chose to step out of their place. You see, and that's what we have to realize is even though we, this, this Bible tells us, you know, it, we're many members of one body. And so just because one person decides they're going to act outside of what they're supposed to be according to the word of God doesn't mean that everybody else is supposed to jump ship, you see. So we have to be careful that we don't allow these things to go on and to take place. Mm -hmm. Amen. And I think that's a good point that you brought out, you know, just about uh, I've seen people get mad and they take off their wedding ring or, you know, they may go to a different room and sleep in separate rooms, but... All of those things don't make you any less married, um, no more than it make you any less accountable for your actions to the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that we have to um, keep in mind. You know, when the Word gives us a command to do something, that command does not change with our emotions or with our situations. And if we're commanded, you know, as the husband to be the head, or as the wife to submit and to fall under that husband's authority, then that command still stands regardless to what we may be facing. You know, that does not change. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and keep reading. And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, 
Where were the smellers? Everybody sees. So in other words, everybody have their own part. And every part is needed. Right. Every part, you know, everybody plays their own part, I should say. And every part is needed. I've seen women, you know, who have, men and women, I should say, who have gotten out of their place. Uh, a woman having, being bossy, having this take takeover uh, spirit, I guess you could say. She gets out of her place, and so then who is supposed to submit? Who's, who's playing the, the, the woman role? Right. But the husband, you see. And so, and, and that's, that's what happens is when you have one get out of their place, then it confuses everything else. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's important that when, that the husband remain the husband, that he remains in his place, that he, you know, he remains what God have created him to be, so that even if things get off kilter, at least he's still in his place. And, and it's a gauge for where everybody else needs to line up at, you know. Right. But Amen. if the man shifts because the woman has shifted, then you have the potential for everything to stay the way it is after everybody has shifted out of their place. Mm -hmm. Woman bossy, so man has to submit. And that's the way, that's what works for us. I don't know how many times I've heard that. That's the way, you know, that's what works for us. Well, go ahead and read verse 18. <laughs> but now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him, and if it and if they were all one member, where were the body? See that's so it says God have set these members up to please himself. As it has pleased him. God is the one that set these things up. And so we can't go against it and say, Well, Lord, this is what works for my family. This is what works for my marriage or my relationship or whatever the case is. We have to do it the way, of course, God tells us to do it. Amen. You know, amen. amen. And and the word makes it clear that he God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. He's not the author of confusion. You see, and so and we're we're gonna go over that in just a little bit. So it's it's important that we know the roles that we're supposed to play as husband and wife. Now I'm gonna tell you what hap what has happened over uh, the years. Many people have taken the role, especially, you know, women, have taken the role of the submissive wife as being less than the husband. You see, and of course, that's not, that's, it's like that's, it's looked upon as being something bad mm -hmm. instead of, just being a position, you see. The word makes it clear right here that everything is important. All parts of the body is important. Right. And so in our natural bodies, of course, our ears are not arguing with our eyes, wanting to be the eyes, because just like the word says, then how would you be able to hear if you didn't have ears? Mm -hmm. God has set these members in, in the body as it pleased him. And every, everybody have their own place. So what happens when you're on a football team and you've been practicing as a quarterback, but all of a sudden you decide when you get out there, I want to play wide receiver. Well, the whole team is going to be confused because now who's supposed to pass the ball? And that's what happens in, in many marriages, hmm. unfortunately, is people get out of their place and it causes chaos. It causes, yeah. it, I think, it causes more confusion than what people uh, uh, realize, you see, and that's not God's will. You know, we pray that people will really grasp a hold of this idea that God is the one that set these things in order. Mm -hmm. And we're living in a society where things have been turned upside down, you know, and, and things like that. Uh, but God has set these things in order. Something is wrong For you, you know, when I when I played football, we went we did what we call we went out for uh, a particular position or a spot on the team. In other words, you had to know within yourself what you were good at. Right. 
And so you might tell your coach, well, coach, I want to go out for wide receiver. I want to, well, what was going to happen? He was going to have the quarterback throw you some passes to see if you were good enough to play wide receiver. And it might have been, it may have been some people on that team that was more talented in that area than you were. And so what the coach's job was, was to help you to discover what was your God-given ability or your natural talent. What were you more talented at? You may have watched TV and watched football on television and you have thought, man, I'd like to catch like that. So I'm going to go out for wide receiver. But in reality, you're, the, you're really a kicker. And so, you know, the, the coach's job is to figure out what you're best at, even if you don't know, even if you don't realize right. what your place is really mm -hmm. on his team. The coach's job is to figure out where you will fit in best. Because one of the worst things you can do is have somebody play in a position where they're not naturally gifted in. You see? And, and so that's the coach's job. Now, God, of course, he's our coach, and he has already laid out what positions we are to play because he's the one that designed us. All right. So he already knows you're, you're this way, so you're going to be good at this. Now what happens is people through their own self-will will get themselves out of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Through their own will, through their own sheer desire. You, you know, again, going back to growing up watching football on TV, you, you may have watched mom and daddy act a certain way and you may think, well, when I grow up, that's the way I'm going to be or I'm going to be the opposite of whatever the case may be. When really the bottom line is you need to get in God's word and see what he says you're supposed to be. Amen. Amen. And I think you um, brought out a really, really valid point about how one person getting out of place kind of throws everything off, you know, and especially in the family, because as the husband who is um, in authority over the family, who's leading the family, um, you can't lead from the back. Mm -hmm. And so if you step out of place, then where does that leave everybody else that you're supposed to be leading? But it kind of puts them in a position to kind of uh, get out of their place and, and go awry and, and do whatever. And so we have to um, also, you know, in recognizing that the Lord has given us a position, realize that it affects other people how we move, whether we're in position or out of position, mm -hmm. that we're not the only ones affected, that it affects other people as well. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, and I've heard... <laughs> <laughs> I've heard sincere people, women and men, mostly women, say, well, my husband ain't doing this, so I got to step up and do it. Well, again, that's, that's no reason for you to get out of your place. Mm -hmm. Even in the church, you know, women taking on roles that God have not called them to um, take on, they'll say, well, it's got more women in the church than men. Or men are, well, you know, listen. <laughs> I promise you, it's got enough men to carry out what it is that God has called them to carry out Amen. in the body of Christ. And so we can't use the excuse of, well, you know, the man isn't doing his role, so I have to step up and do what he, he's supposed to do. That's through self-will again. You see, that's right. through self. And then, of course, uh, the man can't use that as an excuse either. Well, my wife is this way, so I'm going to just let her handle it because that's her nat No, it's not, you know, it's not supposed to be that way. All right. Amen. Just like you said, Amen. the man is supposed to lead the family, and he can't lead them from the back. He has to take an active role, and we have to, as husbands, make sure that we are stepping out on that active role. You know, if, right. if the wife is not uh, asking for family Bible study or uh, family prayer, the husband's job is to step up and do that. Mm -hmm. He's to lead his family spiritually, you see. He's to do that. And a lot of times, men, especially if they were raised by women, some of them, have been groomed to be, to take the role of that, that lady, and, you know, and things like that. But that's not God's will. That's why it's important that we get back to God's word so we can have a better understanding of um, our roles as husband and, and wife. Amen. And I just want to <laughs> kind of bring out a point about what you said, because um, I've heard a lot of women make the statement, too, about, oh, well, you know, he's not doing this, so I have to step up. And what I found in the ladies that I've talked to personally about their personal situations, 
Um, a lot of times it's not that the man um, wasn't stepping up to do whatever it is they felt he was supposed to do. Oftentimes it was that he wasn't moving fast enough for them and he wasn't moving in the time frame that they wanted him to move so well step out the way I'm going to do it mm -hmm. and and that again overstepped the boundaries that's been set because a lot of times um, and I think I came to understand this um, from a spiritual perspective is that with God giving the man um, the authority um, to lead um, with that comes um, wisdom and insight from a perspective that a woman can't see. Mm -hmm. And so what I have learned is that sometimes, you know, you haven't moved in a way fast, as fast as I wanted you to. But as I sat back and watched it all unfold, it's like, wow, okay, well, I see what the Lord was doing now, even though I didn't understand it on the front end. Mm -hmm. I could see it as it unfolded or when, when that process was finished, whenever you, whatever time you took to go through it while you were waiting to hear, you know, whatever direction the Lord wanted you to go in, I could see why it was necessary to wait two days or two weeks or two months. Mm -hmm. You know, whereas, like I said, on the front end, I didn't see that. And so I've learned that even though it may not be in my timing, you know, you have, to, I have to allow you to have your relationship with the Lord and allow him to deal with you however he deals with you, even if it's different from what I perceive it should be. Mm -hmm. And so as wives, we have to um, be really careful with that, that we're not forcing our own will to get something done and then calling it, oh, my husband's out of his place, and so I have to step up. Mm -hmm. We need to check ourselves to make sure we're just not being impatient, mm -hmm. you know, in whatever is going on at the time. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. So, so with that being said, now, uh, actually, let's go ahead and keep reading. Okay, verse 19. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body? And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. And that is what, you know, I think it's so important that husband and wife realize that they need one another. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of what's going on in our society today is we have too many independent people trying to bring their life together in marriages and relationships where it's more like you're just a bonus. I don't need you. I didn't, you know, I was me before I met you. Mm -hmm. And I'll be me after you leave. So it's, so it's kind of like, what is my motive for even being in this relationship? And I, now right. I'm, I'm going to put this out there. I don't think you should be with somebody if you don't need them. Right. That's right. Now, Amen. let me make this clear. Whether you know it or not, single, hus single man or single woman, you do need your spouse. Even if you're single, you need the person that God has for you. Because with that person, he's going to build character in you. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you some things in you that you didn't know, that you wouldn't otherwise know was there right. without that person being there. So whether you realize it or not, you do need them. Now, I think people like to put on this bold front of, oh, I don't need you because they've put themselves in a vulnerable position before with somebody, a vulnerable position before, and the and got hurt and so now we put this wall up saying I don't need anybody but so I'll just tolerate you I don't you know I'll just hold on to you whatever but I don't need you <laughs> well you know it's kind of like so why am I here what what is the glue that's holding us together if we don't need one another right so what is at the root of needing somebody love see you need love you're not that hateful <laughs> and so you need somebody that's going to love you unconditionally. And that's what your job of your spouse is, is to show you that love. And you might not acknowledge that you need them, but you really need them. Mm -hmm. You see, you really need okay. them. And of course, you know, we covered this before, but I'll just bring it out of, again. Um, for us to be at a point that we say we need um, that person, it's a point of vulner vulnerability because then we put ourselves at the mercy of that person to love us unconditionally. Mm -hmm. We have to trust them 
you know, that they're not going to take advantage of the fact that we need them. Mm -hmm. And I think um, in a marriage, we have to know um, as married couples that it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to let your guard down. It's okay to open yourself completely up. It's okay to say, I need my spouse. And, you, you know, that's, that is... Um, when you get to the heart of enjoying your marriage, mm -hmm. when you let all guards down, when you open yourself up and you throw yourself completely in without any reservations, without holding um, your past over your spouse's head and without holding back as a result of your passion, all those things, mm -hmm. you know, that is when you really get to the meat of enjoying your marriage. Amen. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and keep reading now. Verse 22, nay, much more, those members of the body, which seem to be more feeble, are necessary. And those members of the body, which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. And so this is, you know, this is talking about, of course, the body of Christ. And again, it can also be talking about the marriage because they, they both work the same. You see, they both work in the same manner. And so what, what Paul here is saying is that that position that you think is less is really more. The way that you're looking at being a submissive wife is really distorted mm -hmm. because that's the one that receives more honor. You see that? That's the one that receives more honor. God honors the husband. The husband honors the wife. And God honors it all together. Mm -hmm. You see that? But if we're not careful, we'll look at things like, oh, this is not, I want to be more. Right. And to us, you know, and, I, and I, I think that's why it's important that we renew our minds. Right. Jesus said, who is going to be the greatest among you? The one that serves. Yep. But see, an unrenewed mind sees it the way that the rest of the world sees it. I'm not going to submit to you. Well, you know what you're saying? You don't want to do the more honorable thing. Right. When you, you see, but that's, that's, of course, that's the trick of the enemy. Mm -hmm. To make you think that your position is not as important. Right. That, that. You know, a lot of times when, when we, you know, again, bringing up football, um, a lot of times the quarterback is looked upon as being the, I guess, the head of the team. He's the one that leads the defense, I mean the offense. So he's the one that passes the ball, throws the ball, or pitches it, or whatever the case may be. And so he's looked at as being the leader of the team. Mm -hmm. 